like I, I need to make money right now. And the only way to make money right now is by ads. It's the only way you can do it. Like it doesn't matter if your business started yesterday, you pay for an ad, oh, Google go shoot it up there. They, they go go, they go take your money. They, they, they do not discriminate. New business, old business, whatever business, they go take your money. So the trick there was, okay, Google will take my money. Rather I know what I'm doing or know what I'm doing. And starting off, I did not know what I was doing. So a lot of money and a lot of your marketing budget and a lot of businesses deal with this where you are doing these ads and paying $10 a day or $20 a day or whatever it is. And you're just trying to get a sale from it. But that stuff adds up 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. Like it literally, it adds up very quickly. And if you get in the hole 200, 500, $1,000, and you're trying to get some sales from that, how do you make that profitable? So it was very important, if this was gonna be my main source of traffic, if it was gonna be my main source of traffic, how people found us, it was gonna go through Google Ads specifically, um, I needed to figure out how to make fat profitable to then how to make my business profitable. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the 9% Show. I am your host, Stephen Burton, and here at the 9%, y'all know we keep everything 100. If I haven't done it, not doing it, or not about to do it, it would not come out my mouth. Uh, so welcome, everybody, to the 9%. As always here, we always take a toast to the 9%ers out there and those that wish to get into the 9% Club. Shout out to y'all. Mm-hmm. We hitting this week. We hitting this week. I'm excited because we're talking about... Well, I'm always excited, but... Today we are talking about how I made my business profitable in four months. Yes, four months, that's all it took, and I was off to the beach. Well, not exactly. It was a lot of ups and downs and whatnot, but I'm talking about my business, Perfect Tux, which you can go to right now, perfecttux.com, and buy you a suit if you need to. But besides that, when I first launched the business back in 2016, uh, I have a video, which I will link to here, about how... Um, I think, was it how I did 200,000 or 300,000 in the first year? I forget what it was. I don't know. It'll be linked there. You check that out. Some good time content there. But I'm going to talk about how I became profitable in four months. Okay. Four months. It's a lot of times you'll see statistics about businesses. Some businesses takes years to make a profit. Heck, Amazon took they ain't near 15 years or whatever it took, you know, but that's not really fair. It's not really apples to apples there because some certain businesses and certain business types like uh, we, we discussed uh, with uh, Mickey, which I'm also link right there for the interview, that certain businesses and start, uh, startups, they have a focus on growth versus profitability at the beginning. So it's not always, you're not always focusing on profit, but when you're like most businesses, and I will say most, because not all of us are those unicorn and not all of us is a venture back rule type of business. We need to focus on profitability, ASAP. And if you ain't profitable, you go out of business. Okay, that is the rule of thumb. And for those that don't know what profit is, okay, let's just keep it simple. It's your revenue minus your expenses and whatever's left, that is your profit. That is what you, you got. So. Um, I needed to be, so let's, let's put all this in context. So I quit my job, cold turkey, December, 2015, launched the business. I bought a, I got an office space. I got a, a small little warehouse in the office space and quit my job, all this stuff before I had one sale. Yes. I took the ultimate leap of faith, but that's what I did. So in doing that, I had, um, a short runway of money that I had. Uh, stuff I had a countdown of saying, Hey, I needed to make this pop in like literally a year. That's why I gave myself like I ne it needed to happen. There was no, there was no backup plan. And I do not suggest it to everybody following exactly what I do, but I can only say what worked for me and what got me to here today. And then to talk about it about, you know, eight years later. So it does work. I did it, and we're gonna talk about just how, we're gonna break down how it's profitable in four months and stay profitable for that rest of that year. So we're gonna dive into four points, and let's just get into this thing. So the number one thing that I did was I picked the right industry, okay? Um, I'm, I was real strategic about the business I started and why I started it and what my motivations in starting it was. 
I did not have the motivation of, oh my gosh, I love tuxedos, I love suits. Let me design some and sell them to people. No, I had the connections for suits and suppliers and menswear. And I looked at the landscape and said, you know what? Hmm, I don't think nobody knows a tuxedo company besides maybe, you know, men's warehouse or something. You know, I can, I can blurt them out, it's okay. But I was, I, you know, I was like, no one's ever heard of a tuxedo brand. Can you name a, a tuxedo brand? In the word of the mighty uh, Cat Williams, don't worry, I'll wait. I like, I, still to this day, I don't know no technical tuxedo brand. Like there was always like, there was certain brands, let's maybe say Perry Ellis, that make other things and they just so happen to make a suit or just so happen to make a tuxedo. But can you name a specific tuxedo brand? Now all they do is make tuxedos. All they do is make suits, but maybe some suits ones out there, but I was more so sticking with tuxedos. And then I got me even deeper with that thought. And I was just like, well, if can't nobody name a tuxedo brand, they ain't definitely don't know any tuxedo companies. And I was just like, well, hmm, if Perfect Tux just happened to fall in your research of looking for a tuxedos company and everything looks legit, feels legit, is legit, and looks very nice and the customer experience is great, the customer service is great, everything about it is great, they would buy from me because they would think I've been in business forever. And why not? Perfect Tux, that's a great name. So that was my thesis, that was why I started Perfect Tux. I mean, not completely. I, I had another video getting into like how I started in the background, which we'll also link here. I'm starting to get used to this link here stuff. We got so much content. I'm like, goodness gracious. Link here, watch all this stuff. But um, but all these, trust me, all these previous videos are really good. So you need, that's why I'm, you know, I, I suggest you check them out. Um, but I specifically knew that I could get into this industry day one, launch my business and have instant success. I knew that, I knew I could compete from day one. That was part of my idea. So I, I, I truly believe that picking the right industry, picking the right company, picking the right market was key to having fast success, was key to being profitable fast. Because I, you know, there was a lot of hurdles and, and challenges that I just didn't necessarily have to deal with. And then I, I thought that people would not have a problem working with a, 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 new, a new company. Now, the only thing I had to tackle, and, and I've spoken about this in the past, was that brand trust and getting people to trust what Perfect Tux was. Especially when I just come out and you Google Perfect Tux and I don't even come up on Google. Like, that was kind of hard to get past. And I'll never forget getting a couple phone calls of like, just literally, uh, I like your stuff, but I'm not seeing anything on Google. Are y'all real? You exist? But that's why we get into the importance of phone, phone numbers, importance of customer service, importance of reviews, and you know, all that type of stuff. Brand trustworthy, like, the, like can they trust your brand? Does that matter? Like, are you there? Do you exist? Like, how does someone know? Like, I knew I had to tackle that stuff as soon as possible. So, you know, that was really my only challenge there. But I, you know, after I get getting a little bit past that, maybe just having a couple of reviews, maybe having ten reviews, and you know, maybe a couple sales, and you know, getting getting a little bit out there, then finally, when Google finally Perfect Tux finally showed up on Google, it didn't take too long. Um, kind of solved that. But like picking the right industry, if you want good success, be strategic in the business you start and the industry you get in, because there's certain things that's just that's just hard, and it's just hard as part of the equation. So. That was uh, number one. Number two, the number two thing that made us profitable within four months was low overhead, okay? Low expenses. I already broke down what makes a profit, okay? And if you could lower those expenses, heck, you could make $5. And if it only cost you a dollar to do it, and you didn't have an office, and you didn't have nothing else going on, maybe your profit is $4. Boom, you're profitable. Problem solved, okay? Now what you're buying with that $4, that's another question, but you're technically profitable. But for me, I p specifically picked e-commerce. Like e-commerce was a very uh, low barrier entry, didn't need too much st startup cash. Um, for me, I did need some startup money and you know, we kind of, to, to make it as legit as I knew it needed to be and be properly prepared for it. And heck, even just to be able to quit my job and have give myself the runway to make, to give the business a chance, that was all part of the overhead to me. But the, you know, I had a small 
I had a I had a small um, office. The rent wasn't really crazy. Um, besides that, it was just pretty much rent, uh, electricity, internet bill, phone bill, like basic stuff like that. That's all I had. But I pretty much could reach the world with e-commerce for you know no money. Like it was just it was just crazy. Now. Where a lot of the money went to, uh, as far as the expenses that did go to, and this is going to lead into my next point, though, but it was that marketing piece because the fact of the matter is e-commerce is very hard and it's very hard to be to uh, for a new e-commerce store to get established in a major way. How do you get first on Google? How do you how do you how do people find you? How do you find your customer? Like, what do you do? And unfortunately, so which leading me into my next point here, because I'm going to kind of tackle these both at the same time was mastering Google ads. That was part of my profitability and pro part of what made us successful very quickly. And the reason I needed to master Google ads um, was because we were unknown and it was very, we were very hard to find. But if you, if you, and if you searched, you know, uh, tuxedos or wedding tuxedos, a burgundy tuxedo, uh, green suit, whatever the case may be, uh, we just did not show up. We were brand new. Like we're, you're not going to rank on Google, but, um, I ain't, I ain't got to hear that. Like I, I need to make money right now. And the only way to make money right now is by ads. It's the only way you can do it. Like it doesn't matter if your business started yesterday, you pay for an ad. Oh, Google go shoot it up there. They, they go, go, they go take your money. They, they, they do not discriminate new business, old business, whatever business, they go take your money. So the trick there was, okay, Google will take my money. Rather I know what I'm doing or know what I'm doing. And starting off, I did not know what I was doing. So a lot of money and a lot of your marketing budget and a lot of businesses deal with this where you are doing these ads and paying $10 a day or $20 a day or whatever it is. And you're just trying to get a sale from it. But that stuff adds up 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. Like it literally, it adds up very quickly. And if you get in the hole 200, 500, $1,000, and you're trying to get some sales from that, how do you make that profitable? So it was very important, if this was gonna be my main source of traffic, it was, it was gonna be my main source of traffic, how people found us, it was gonna go through Google Ads specifically, um, I needed to figure out how to make fat profitable to then how to make my business profitable. So what did I do? Oh, I went into overdrive mode of how to learn Google Ads. I bought a book of like Google Ads for dummies, it was like this thick. I probably got through 10 pages and the little skimming little things there, but you know, shouts out to YouTube. I think at the, at the time and blogs and, uh, geez, I don't even know. I really don't know how I taught myself. It was very hard. I ain't gonna lie. Google ads back then, it was called Google AdWords back then. And it was very hard. It was very complicated, very hard. And thankfully they've made it a lot easy now, but it's still complicated and it's still a little confusing. You got to kind of know what you're doing, but they've, they've created a lot of things now where it's kind of like, uh, you know, you're, you're trusting the algorithm to do things, AI stuff. Hey, hey, right now it could, it could take your product photo and put it on the beach somewhere, like with a snap of fingers and like, boom, there you go. So, um, or, or write your ad copy for you. There's so much stuff that makes life easy, but you still got to know how it works and how to use it and what you're targeting and things like that. But, um, but yeah, so pretty much I had to master Google ads and make that profitable. As soon as I made Google ads profitable, oh, it was only popping. It was only popping. Because at that point, all you got to do is pretty much scale things up. So if you're saying, you know what, every dollar I, I spend, I make $3. So every $10, I make $30 or whatever, you know, the mathematicals on that is. But all I got to do is, okay, well, let me just keep increasing my ad spend. And as long as I keep that ratio going, I'm going to boost it up. And that's what happened. I just boosted that up, boosted that up, boosted that up. And then as, 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 as all the traffic came in through the paid traffic, then slowly and surely we started getting some organic traffic and things like that. Or I could remarket to certain people. People would visit my site. Then I would hit them with, the, you know, a Facebook ad of, of retargeting ad and like, Hey, come back, come shop with us again. But really understanding that Google ads and then understanding my digital marketing strategy at the time, that was the major, major, major key. So it went, so my low overhead went from, you know, really having low basic expenses, but my biggest expense at that time and that whole first year, even my first two years, uh, and it's still a big expense to this day, was marketing. 
Like that was a super big expense. And, but the thing about it is you just got to pay to play. And it's like, I needed to market to get people to my website, but I just had them. It just had to be profitable. And, um, one quick thing that I will touch on this when you, if you are deciding to dive into digital ad space, it's not necessarily that you, you, you know, you, you bought, you, you paid a dollar for an ad and you made $3, but maybe that $3 thing, it also costs a dollar 50, you know, it costs you a dollar, dollar 50 for your cost of goods sold. So really from that $3 profit, you, or that $3 uh, gross, you made a dollar 50. So if you made a dollar 50 and it cost you a dollar to make that ad, what's your profit? 50 cents. So keep your cogs, cost of goods sold, any of the, the cost to acquire a customer, all that stuff goes into this, uh, this equation. So that's where it gets real complicated and gets really hard. I try not to make this stuff sound easy, but uh, you know, sometimes it, it, it can sound that way, but just know it takes a lot more thought process in this. But I had to master all of that and understand like, you know, my average dollar, my average order amount and like the stuff I wanted to put, the products I wanted to put through Google and the products I did want to put, put through Google. Did I want to sell a bow tie for $10 or did I want to sell a suit for $200? What could give me that, you know? You know, so really think about that deeply, but that was the, one of the main things there. And the last thing I'll say, the last thing on how I became profitable in four months was I could not fail. I couldn't. I was not going back to a regular job. Okay. I was not going to pick up my, my bag and get all this debt and just come back and say, uh, back to the job. Now, could it have happened? Yes. Could it still happen? Yes, it could still happen. Okay. We always fighting to survive around here, but that extra motivation of, yo, I quit my job, Steve. You got a daughter that's one year old. Your wife is holding it down for you. She trusts you. Everybody believes in you. Steve, you do it. Everything you do, everything you do is, is successful. Your family's like, yo, yeah, Steve, you got it. Oh, you killing it. You killing it. Oh, little do you know, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. That type of pressure. Okay. Gets you up every day, has you go to work, and has you put in the work. Oh, these Google ads are too hard. Oh, I'm gonna spin up, I'm gonna be up all night reading everything I can until I figure it out. Okay? So, you know, when you have investors and all this other stuff and you know, other people's money, do you quite got that type of grind? No, I don't know. No, I don't know. But uh, for me, that was a big part of it too. I could not fail, and it, I had to be profitable. I had to make a pro profit because my profit was how I was gonna eat and survive. So hey, that's how I did it. Simple as one, two, three, four. Now you go home and you try it yourself and put in the comments on how that works out or, or what are you doing? Or how long did it take your business to become profitable? I really wanna know, seriously, put in the comments. And while you're doing that, also be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate all the support. And until next time, I will catch you on the next 9% show. Peace.